Our objectives for this lesson are the following. Represent logarithmic functions and discuss its properties. I suggest you take time to watch these video lessons to fully comprehend today's lesson. Let us start graphing f of x is equal to the logarithm of x to the base 2. So let's have table of values. Remember that in logarithms, the x should be greater than 0. So I have here values of x that are greater than 0. And then we are going to solve for the value of f of x or y. All we have to do is to substitute each value of x in the function. So let's start with 1 over 8. So this will become f of 1 over 8 is equal to the logarithm of 1 over 8 to the base 2. And then I'll express 8 as 2 cubed. And then I'm going to bring up this denominator and that will make the exponent negative. Property of logarithm, if your x is equal to your b, then the answer to this expression is the exponent of your x. So this is equal to negative 3. So this is negative 3. Next, x is equal to 1 over 4. So 1 over 4 is 1 over 2 squared. So imagine this will be 2, so the answer here will be negative 2. And then 1 half is 1 over 2 raised to the first power. So this will be negative 1. So the answer will be negative 1. And then for 1, so let us substitute f of 1 is equal to the logarithm of 1 to the base 2. Property of logarithm, if your x is equal to 1, then this is equal to 0. So this is 0. And then f of 2 is equal to the logarithm of 2 to the base 2. Another property of logarithm, if x is equal to b, then the answer here is 1. So this is 1. Next, f of 4 is equal to the logarithm of 4 to the base 2. And 4 is 2 squared. So the answer to this expression is 2. So this will be 2. Next, for 8, I'm going to make it as 2 cubed. So the answer here is 3. So this is 3. Now let us plot. So we have x is 1 over 8. So meaning 1 unit, we're going to divide it into 8 equal parts. The first division is 1 over 8. And then y or f of x is negative 3. So negative 3 here. And then 1 fourth. So this time we're going to divide 1 unit into 4 equal parts. The first division is 1 fourth and then y is negative 2. And then we have 1 half. So this time we're going to divide 1 into 2 equal parts and then negative 1. And then if our x is 1, our y is 0. So 1 0. And then we have 2 1. Next, we have 4, 2. And then we have 8, 3. Now, let us connect the points. This is an increasing function. And this happens when your base is greater than 1. I hope you still remember our lesson when we graph f of x is equal to 2 raised to x. Now, let us combine the graphs of f of x is equal to the logarithm of x to the base 2. And f of x is equal to 2 raised to x. Here are the graphs. So this is the graph of f of x is equal to 2 raised to x, an exponential function. While this one is the graph of f of x is equal to the logarithm of x to the base 2, a logarithmic function. We have learned that exponential and logarithmic functions are inverses of one another. Are they? So to make sure, let us bring out our line y is equal to x. If we are going to fold our Cartesian plane on this line, will these two graphs coincide? Yes, they will. Therefore, exponential and logarithmic functions are indeed inverses of one another. Now let us graph f of x is equal to the logarithm of x to the base 1 half. So let's have our table of values. Again, our x should be greater than 0. To solve for y, all we have to do is to substitute each value of x in our function. Let's start with 1 over 8. So this will become f of 1 over 8 is equal to the logarithm of 1 over 8 to the base 1 half. And then I'm going to express 1 8 as quantity 1 half raised to the third 
power. 1 cube is 1, 2 cube is 8. In this manner, my x is equal to my b. So the answer here is the exponent, which is 3. So this is 3. Now for 1 fourth, imagine that this will be 1 half raised to the second power. So the answer will be 2. For 1 half, this will be 1 half raised to the first power. So the answer will be 1. For 1, this will be f of 1 is equal to the logarithm of 1 to the base 1 half. Property of logarithm, if your x is 1, then the expression is equal to 0. So this is 0. Next, f of 2 is equal to the logarithm of 2 to the base 1 half. Here we can apply change of base and I'm going to choose 2 as my base. So this will be the logarithm of 2 to the base 2 divided by the logarithm of 1 half to the base 2. And then I'm going to express 1 half as 2 raised to negative 1, while the exponent of 2 here is 1. So my answer in the numerator is 1, in the denominator is negative 1. 1 divided by negative 1 is negative 1. So this is negative 1. For 4, this will become 2 squared. So you have 2 divided by negative 1 is negative 2. For 8, this will become 2 cubed. So 3 divided by negative 1 is negative 3. Now let us plot. So the first one is 1, 8, 3. So for 1, 8, again, we're going to divide 1 unit into 8 equal parts. The first division is 1, 8. And then our y is 3, so we have here. Next, 1, 4, 2. So this time, we're going to divide 1 into 4 equal parts. The first division is 1 fourth, and then our y is 2. Next, 1 half at the middle, and then our y is 1. Next, we have 1 0. Next, we have 2 negative 1, so 2 and then negative 1. And then 4 negative 2, so we have 4 negative 2. And then 8, negative 3. Now let us connect the points. This is the graph of f of x equals the logarithm of x to the base 1 half. This is a decreasing function. This happens when your base is less than 1 but greater than 0. I hope you still remember our lesson when we graph g of x is equal to the quantity 1 half raised to x. Here is the graph. Now let us combine the graphs of f of x equals the logarithm of x to the base 1 half and g of x equals quantity 1 half raised to x. Here are the graphs. I just changed the f of x and g of x into y. So the red one is quantity 1 half raised to x. This is an exponential function. While the blue one is the logarithm of x to the base 1 half, this is a logarithmic function. Are they inverses of one another? Let us see. So if we are going to fold our Cartesian plane on this line, then this part will coincide with this part. So they are inverses of one another. Here are the two graphs that we formed. The green one is y equals the logarithm of x to the base 2. And the blue one is y equals the logarithm of x to the base 1 half. Now let us discuss the properties of these graphs. The domain. So the blue one. The domain starts from 0 to positive infinity. Actually, 0 is not included. This serves as the asymptote. The green one also from 0 to positive infinity. So we have 0 to positive infinity, 0 not included. Next, the range. So for the blue one, since this will go infinitely upward and will go infinitely downward, so the range is from negative infinity up to positive infinity. Same thing with the green graph. So the set of all real numbers are negative infinity to positive infinity. 
This is what type of function? So the blue one is a function and also one-to-one. -one. The green one is also a function and also one-to-one. -one. So logarithmic functions are one-to-one -one functions. The x-intercept. So the x-intercept is the point where the graph crosses the x-axis. Both for the blue and the green, they crosses the x-axis at this point. And this point is 1, 0. Now, y-intercept is the point where the graph crosses the y-axis. Since the y-axis serves as the vertical asymptote, then they do not cross the y-axis. So, there is no y-intercept. Next, vertical asymptote. Asymptote is a line where the graph gets closer and closer. So, both for these graphs, they get closer and closer to the y-axis. The equation of the y-axis is the line x equals 0. Now, this will go infinitely downward and the green one will go infinitely upward. So, there is no horizontal asymptote. Next, graph is increasing if our base is greater than 1. And it is decreasing if our base is less than 1 but greater than 0. Let us determine the following based on the graphs here. So for the domain, both for the purple and the pink graphs, it is from 0 to positive infinity, 0 not included. For the range, that is from negative infinity up to positive infinity. For the x-intercept, the point where the graph crosses the x-axis and that is 1, 0. For the y-intercept, there is no point in the y-axis that the graph crosses to, so there is no y-intercept, none. Next, for the vertical asymptote, that is the line x equals 0. Horizontal asymptote, we have none. And for the trend, since both bases are greater than 1, then the trend is increasing. Let us have another one. So the domain is from 0 to positive infinity, 0 not included. For the range, that is from negative infinity to positive infinity. For the x-intercept, that is the point 1, 0. y-intercept, since this is the vertical asymptote, the y-axis, so we have no y-intercept. The vertical asymptote, as I've said, is the y-axis and that is the line x equals 0. Horizontal asymptote, we do not have horizontal asymptote. And for the trend, since both bases are less than 1 but greater than 0, the trend is decreasing. Now, it is time to check your understanding. Pause this video for more time. <music> Let us answer. For the domain, that is from 0 to positive infinity, 0 not included. For the range, that is from negative infinity to positive infinity. For the x-intercept, that is the point 1, 0. There is no y-intercept because the y-axis serves as the vertical asymptote. So the vertical asymptote is the y-axis, that is the line x equals 0. We do not have horizontal asymptote. For the trend, this one is increasing and this one is decreasing. Gets 